What's up? Oh man, mic's not put in. That would've been awkward. Wow. Take two. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to Skeff Count Knowledge. I am Skeff. Thank you so much for tuning in today's video. I greatly appreciate it. This is gonna be a fun one. It's gonna be a long one, but it's gonna have kind of everything you've been wanting to see in kind of one go. If you're the first time here, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Without you guys, this would be less entertaining. Probably. I don't know. Who knows? I do know it would definitely be less entertaining. Moving on. So, today's video. First off, happy new comic book day. It was amazing. I didn't get anything crazy. I'm so excited. Moving on. We'll be doing a 50 book pre-screen submission. And in this video, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go over the books very quickly. So the books will be a very small part of the video. But people have asked though on what they what I look for when I'm submitting the book. So I'm gonna spend a little extra time on six books I have with me actually that I was going to submit but advised against so seeing the defects in them that I'm going to show you actually later in this video also I'm going to show you exactly how I pack up my books and then ship them off to CGC so it'll be a step-by-step -step process on like what I look for how I pack it up and then how I ship it on out so stay tuned it's going to be a blast all right all right so first book up Kanan, The Last Padawan, number one. It's pretty good shape. Next up, a copy of Sweet Tooth, number one. Thor, number one, the first printing. Spider-Man series two, but issue number one. A copy of Thor, number eight. New Agents of Atlas, number one, first print. And five copies of New Agents of Atlas, issue number two. And then a book I've been writing, I've been excited to submit for a while. I should have sent it to the CGC signing. Um, but Strange Academy, number one, that's got the uncover. Strange Academy, number one, cover A. Uh, one of my favorites, Strange Academy, number one, the wraparound cover. Two copies of Strange Academy, number one, the Walmart exclusive. Which is still an odd thing to say. Walmart exclusive. Ugh. Moving on. Two copies of Strange Academy, number two, first print, cover A. A book that I'm a big fan of, actually, is Spider-Gwen, uh, number 24, the first appearance of Gwenum. I absolutely love this cover. So, hoping, so I'm hoping that these can make the cut, but yeah, love this cover. And then we have a very cool Spider-Man number zero, the second printing. And then no batch can be complete without a little bit of Kanto. This is the... Canto number one, the convention exclusive, which was released at New York Comic Con, I think limited to 500 copies. So I have one, uh, two of those, a Canto number one, third printing. And last but not least, for the first set of 25, is a book that I know a fellow friend, YouTuber of mine, Comic Man Andy, would approve of a beautiful copy of Saga number one, first printing. So excited about that one. All right, so next set of 25 is going to be the Department of Truth number one, the second printing. The series seems to be gaining some traction. Otherwise, it's only on two issues, but so far the two issues have been phenomenal. A uh, copy of Action Comics 894. A character that's kind of died down a little bit, but still a great character. Um, the first appearance of the Immortal Hulk. And then this one, I'm just a sucker for anything Gilliam March. So Gotham City Sirens number one, first print. And then a beautiful set that I hope makes the cut, hopefully all three of them. I have the Gotham City Sirens five. Six and seven. Gillian March's covers are stunning. Um, as you saw in the very beginning of the video, I was able to pick up two copies. Yay! I'm so excited. I don't know what it is about the shiny, but it's very exciting. So two copies of those that I'll be sending off. I know, I know. They they I couldn't fit them in the other something killing children pre-screen, so I'm like, I'm adding them to these. Um, a cover that I was surprised I had. I knew I had the whole series run already, but this one I was surprised. I, I thought I picked it up, but this one's stunning. This is the Bitterroot number four, but the David Mack. David Mack absolutely killed it with watercolors. And apparently this book has gained some traction, so I'm like, I already have a couple copies like of cover A. So I'm like, well, let's get this one graded. Two copies of King Thor number one. A book that I picked up in a long box. 10 years ago when I started reading the series. This is Star Wars Legacy's number one, the second printing. Surprisingly, hard to find. And I actually have number two, the second printing as well, because that's all I had at the time when I picked up from the store 10 years ago. That one is a little more rough shape, so that one's gotta get pressed, but this one is absolutely stunning. 
Though I'm looking forward to getting this Adam Hughes cover, actually. Getting graded. Picked up from that Clayton Crane signing from a couple months ago. It was the Spider-Man number one, the Torment Virgin exclusive cover. I think limited to maybe a thousand copies. And then Venom 27, the Road Tour exclusive, also limited to a thousand copies. Then also I found a nice low printing of a Spawn 239, just a low print run between that 235 and like 245 issue. They were just like low print runs, so I found that. It's a nice book. A book I'm very excited about, more Star Wars stuff, just another copy of Dr. Aphra, first appearance in Vader number three. Another cool book that I found at actually like half price books for like two bucks like a year ago was just uh, Spider-Man number 12 when uh, Gwen Stacy and Miles Morales were on the cover upside down. Another copy of Miles Morales Spider-Man number six, the first appearance of Starling. A uh, book that I probably now might send to CGC for that Dinah Cage Stegman signing because I just love this cover. It's just the Venom 25, that Walmart exclusive. God, it's still weird. Still weird. Can't get over that. But yeah, I absolutely love this cover. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I thought it was great. So this one I made it just send in. Maybe. But yeah, so that's the book I'm definitely going to get graded. Either signed or just get graded now. Another really cool find that I found. I think I paid like $40 for this one. Just because I still, still trying to find a nice clean copy of the first printing. But the very first parent of Cosmic Ghost Rider. Thanos number 13, but the second printing. So uh, another fun book that I'm kind of like speculating on would be the uh, the Far Sector number one, the second printing. So they'll be able to snag a couple of these, and uh, we'll see if anything Green Lantern shows up in that new uh, Justice League Snyder cut or anything from maybe HBO Max movie, which would be super cool. I'm always guessing there might be like a Green Lantern little cameo at some point in it. But those are the 50 books, and now let's go ahead and transition over and show you the books that didn't make the cut and what to look for when you're submitting books yourself. All right, guys, thanks for, thanks for bearing with me on this one. I'm doing the best I can to try to show off these defects. So I have actually six books here that I was going to attempt to resubmit for a pre-screen, but upon further inspection, like I said, I don't think they're gonna make the cut, and now I'm gonna show you what to look for if you are ever gonna try to get some books uh, graded or submitted, either for just like grading in general or for pre-screen, or kind of just like defects to look for that can knock the grade down. So the first book up is we're gonna have a copy of Undiscovered Country, number one. Now the interesting part of this, this was part of a previous pre-screen that did not make the cut. And you know, as you can tell, like an all white cover. So, you know, obviously no color breaks on there, but this didn't make the cut. And there's actually one, if you can see it right now, that'd be awesome. So see my thumb, see right there? Do everything I can to kind of show you without damaging the book too much. So right there, is one kind of spine tick and then if you work your way down the book everything I can to get that in focus for you guys there's a couple little ones working their way one and then another one down here at the bottom two there we go. here's a copy of Kanan number one has I'm just like damaging the book more um but I'm doing everything I can to try to show you so this one in the light just getting a good light is really important but as you can tell on here Trying to do everything I can to see on the camera. It just has a couple little spine ticks just going across there. So like from far away, you're like, like it, it presents nicely. Like you can kind of just see the one little there, but it presents very nicely far away. But you know, upon further inspection, you want to take your time, you know, and just look for like little things like that, like little rub there, little spine tick there. And then on the back, it actually gets a little bit worse, but it, this is always interesting. This is all the interesting part about when you get books looks great and what they're looking for. Try to get this in focus for you guys. So like see all that rubbing, the whiting there? That seems to happen with like a lot of a lot of new modern books. And the fact that like the the whiting from the ink just kind of just just comes right off of there. So that's another reason why this one didn't get submitted. We got another great looking uh, all black cover. Then number four like that Hamlet homage. Hamlet homage. Hamlet homage? Who knows? So this one, upon further inspection, if you look, this one also has like, you know, a bunch of them. So it's like one of those ones where you're like, you know, potentially you can see a couple of them far away, but then, you know, you want to make sure that they allow for a certain amount of defects. But if you look on the back, the, the rubbing right there, and then I do believe, just a little rubbing on the corner. So this is another one that I just, upon further inspection, I decided not to take the chance on. I think this might be the last one I have for an example, but you have this wonderful, fun copy, the Hans cover of Miss Marvel number 31. You're like, oh, 
If you can see the defect, wonderful, good job on you. And on the back, look at that. Beautiful, right? But this is not which is a copy that you know you look at and you if you if you see it, you see it. Good job. Otherwise though, you upon further inspection, you notice that right there, and you're like, no. Now granted, the great part is that like all white cover. So no colors are broken or anything. So this is just a definitely something that's like a pressable defect, but it is definitely one that would not pass. Yeah, it doesn't go all the way to the back. Just on the front. But yeah, that would be one that's a super pressable defect, but it would not make the pre-screen process, that's for sure. All right, I lied. I have one more kind of an interesting one that I want you to look at as well. So it's another one of those lower print run spawns, and you're like, look at this thing. It's perfect, right? Go to the back. Gentle, gentle. Like, also, wonderful, right? So this is one of the ones where you really want to like pay close attention. Bring it up, keep it focused. See it right there? There's like three of them right there. And I thought there was one more. There's a little one. I'm trying to keep this for you guys. But yeah, definitely those three right there. And that's one where you're just like, not sure. Let's go going across there. That, you know, it's one of those ones where you're like, you're not sure. Like, sure, they're pressable. And like, maybe it breaks a little bit of color. And it's like, will they tolerate that? And that, that that's one that I decided against not sending out. And now I'm kind of curious. Now I'm like curious on sending this one out with those there, if it would make the cut. So this one I, I may or may not send out still, but this one that kind of looked for that I, I did go against sending out. But guys, that's what that's what I look for though when getting books graded. Now for the fun part of the video, at least the fun part for me, where I get to show you exactly how I get everything all packed up into a previously CGC box that had graded books in there and shipped out to them. So hopefully you guys enjoy this part because that's a lot of fun for me. You guys gonna need two 12 inch by 12 inch pieces of bubble wrap, two sets of painter's tape, blue preferably, mailers obviously, and then to get the books packed up securely, what I like to do is exactly what CGC recommends you to do, which is place one book at the bottom and then four books on top of it. Therefore, trying to keeping all the books safe during the shipment process. The painter's tape for me has become invaluable in shipping out any books, no matter where they're headed. I usually try to get three pieces, about a couple inches, uh, ripped off ahead of time. So as I'm getting all the books packed up, I don't have to worry about fiddling around with the roll at all. And I find this method to be the most efficient in trying to keep the book safe, while also remembering to try to make it as easy as possible for CGC when they're actually unpackaging your books. And this is where the Gemini Mailers come in handy. You try to use painter safe for everything because at the end of the day, just try to think about the people that are actually taking their time to open the thousands upon thousands of packages you have. So the easier it is for them, the easier they are in your books more than likely. And this is where it comes in where I usually just use one piece of just normal packing tape to seal the box shut. And just to keep everything just a little bit more secure, I usually try to add a piece or two one to the top and one to the bottom. But as you can see, I usually try to make sure that give it a little shake test and it usually passes with flying color colors. And I've never had any damaged books when I pack up books this way in a mailer when I ship them out. But overall, this has been a lot of fun and I've had a blast shooting this and filming this video. If you guys have really enjoyed this, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, notification bell to see when I post my next video. Also, one thing is a, a pro tip, I usually try to label the books in the mailers so that it's easier for them to, you know, unbox them. All right, guys, let you enjoy this part. This is my favorite part. Catch you later. Skeff, out.